Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, anywhere around the world with our virtual conference today. Uh, my name is Ron Dagdag. Let me share my screen real quick. All right. And today we'll be talking about leveraging the power of machine learning with Onyx. Hi, my name is Ron Dagdag. I, on Twitter, my Twitter's handle is at Ron Dagdag. And today, just to clear things up, we're gonna be talking about Onyx, not for, you know, for Pokemon audience, we're not gonna be talking about the Pokemon Onyx and also not the mineral Onyx, if you're kind of confused with the title that is on uh, the agenda. So if you're interested in uh, getting information about the slides or the presentation I have today, uh, you can go to this link or QR code if you wanna follow through. I'm also gonna post this later on uh, at the end of my presentation. If you're, uh, my name is Ron Dagdag. I'm interested in augmented reality, virtual reality and internet of things and the convergence of all those. So, uh, we think about programming, the traditional programming is about this way, right? You figure out an algorithm and you have a series of input and you sp it spits out the answers. In machine learning, it flipped the other way around, right? You have, you have the same input, but you have answers, meaning the desired output, and you train the machine to build an algorithm for you. So in traditional programming, the way we look at it, right? You have your algorithm, your input and your answers. And then of course, in machine learning world, we have the answers input and spits out an algorithm. So in machine learning world, that's called training data. And we use a training frame framework to spit out a model. And that model we would use for our program to, uh, to deliver that and it's called inferencing. And we use a uh, machine learning runtime in order, uh, inferencing runtime in order to spit, you know, spit out our answer. And then of course the answers that we get there, we collect them as part of our training data as a, a cycle. Guys, if you have questions, feel free to uh, place them in the chat and also uh, we will answer them for you. So typically in, you know, in machine learning, right? Uh, there's machine learning frameworks that is available out there and how you typically would do it. You have a PyTorch device or you, you, you have PyTorch, you write it in PyTorch and you run it locally in your machine. And then if I'm out, you know, researching more about AI, and there's a bunch more um, machine learning uh, frameworks out there, just like any, you know, if you're a JavaScript developer, yeah, there's a lot of JavaScript developer, uh, JavaScript frameworks, the same way in the machine learning world. And of course, when you try to deploy these machine learning uh, models, you have to figure out where to deploy. And then there's different types now, right? Where you deploy it through CPU or GPU, you use it, you use your phone or you deploy in the cloud in different areas, right? In Internet of Things devices. And that's what Onyx does. And that's the bridge between the frameworks into uh, the deployment side, uh, which machines it would, uh, would run. So Onyx, it's open neural network exchange. It's an open format for machine learning model. It is on GitHub, it's open source. And uh, there's links out there you can, you can visit if you're interested in learning more about, about Onyx. And through the years, there's a lot of partners out there that have in, you know, integrated their technology into Onyx and some uh, added capabilities into. It was started by a partnership with uh, Microsoft and also Facebook. But through the years, all these different companies have collaborated. 
Uh, if you look at it on GitHub, it's about 9,000 stars out there. It's a very active community, uh, 1,700 pull requests, about 175 contributors, and it, it's growing. And uh, Model Zoo is uh, something that you, you, you may be able to use, existing models that you may be able to use and integrate it to your uh, software or your programs. So today, our agenda, we'll be talking about what is Onyx and how to create an Onyx model and how do we, do we integrate and deploy it with our existing applications or new applications that we're building. So like I said, on the create side right here, you know, that, that would be your step one. And then of course, we'll talk about step two, which is the deployment side. So step one, how do we create it? So as data scientist or computer vision uh, specialist, treat them as the best baker in town, right? They are the ones that are responsible for figuring out the secret recipe of your company. If you think about, they try different algorithms, they try different uh, formulas or different training techniques in order to build, uh, to, to create the best bread, right? Uh, for your company. And so four ways to get an Onyx model, right? Is using the Onyx model zoo, Azure custom vision service to convert an existing uh, models that you've trained through PyTorch or TensorFlow. Also, you can train models in machine learning and using automated machine learning techniques. So Onyx Model Zoo are uh, converted models, existing models out there. So if you're interested in integrating REST.NET, MobileNet, and you know, image classification models, that's out there, check out the Onyx model Zoom. It may already have it in there and you can just download those, on, those models. So treat a Onyx as kind of like PDF, right? Uh, you know, you write to different word processors and PDF once is a format that allows you to be able to view it in different machines, you know, you view it in the phone or, or be able to uh, print it out without requiring the original software where it was written on, uh, as long as you have any PDF viewer. Uh, so treat, think of it that way on how we would use uh, Onyx. So another way is through customvision.ai. Uh, this is, you know, a lot of the cloud providers can uh, create these now. I'm looking at, I'm showing you what, what is available in Azure, where you can upload images and these images, you can tag them. And once it's tagged, you can train and then export and download Onyx from there. So it's a three-step process that simplifies the uh, vision service for you. Of course, converting models, you know, you know different teams in, you know, data science teams have different expertise and different knowledge on frameworks and what they are used to or what they are trained or how they, they, they feel best at it. So it makes sense that converting models to Onyx allows you to be able to uh, deploy it. So how you would convert models, load an existing one, you know, there's converters for uh, different type of uh, frameworks, and then you save it to a non -X model. Uh, there's also a um, utility out there called Netron that visualizes the uh, graph of the operation. So what Onyx is doing is actually uh, an in internal you know, representation of the commands or the, uh, you know, the algorithms that is being used by your uh, neural network or uh, your traditional machine learning operations. So it's, it has a list of all, all the operations and it gets converted and uses that. So it's, it's an open spec. 
So you would use Netron to visualize it to, it also helps developers to know what is the input and output of uh, an existing model so in, without going back to the data scientist and, uh, and, and, then, and then identifying which ones, right? So it, it looks something like this. So I have Netron turned on here. So I can say, oh, these are my inputs and this is my output. This is just the simplest example. I can see it tells me right here what the format is and then it tells me what version, but the input that is required in order to run, uh, in order to uh, use the Onyx model. So how, you know, a typical example, how you would use this in PyTorch. In this case, I'm using AlexNet. And uh, typically there is a torch.onyx.export you just have to know which one, depending on the framework that you're, you're using, uh, there's a way you can export the Onyx and specify the output file based on that. You can, oh, there's also a command line that if you want to, uh, to try out and, uh, and test, uh, and it is, in, a lot of it is in Python. And, uh, you know, like in this case, it's tensor, TensorFlow Onyx convert. Um, with you know, your save model path and also the output path. Cool. <laughs> uh, the title talk, it says Onyx, but it's O-N-Y-X, but this is called O-N-N-X, <laughs> just to clear it up. Uh, how to train the models in Azure Machine Learning. Uh, so you can also use Azure Machine Learning to, to do your training or, or, or on the cloud uh, where you can do automated machine learning or hyperparameter tuning. Uh, but the idea there is you have this part where you do your experiments, right? And you do your training on the cloud. And then there's that registration piece. You know, think of it as AI ops, right? Instead of DevOps, AI ops where you know, the data scientist would do their training and then be able to register and manage that model, you know, and the same way as we, you know, we you know, publish to, uh, you know, Docker, uh, Docker registry. You think about this as a you know, model registry, and then we now we can mix and match with this image, use this model, and then deploy it in the cloud. So that's where you would do your art orchestration that way. And of course, whenever we talk about, you know, when we deploy machine learning models, you know, one thing to, to consider is, you know, if you're a developer, you're gonna see this where they talk about tensors. And I just wanna clear out to everyone what a tensor is. And uh, it is a high dimensional matrices. When you think about this, this is a one dimensional uh, tensor, uh, a tensor of dimension of six, right? Uh, and this one right here, it is a matrix of six by four, which is a tension uh, of dimension six and four. And so of course, if you're doing computer vision, most likely you'll have you know, X, Y, and Z, which is a uh, tensor of dimension, uh, like in this case, three, four, four, two. So we, we did talk about how you create Onyx models, I'm gonna focus the rest of my talk about how do we deploy machine learning models or Onyx models. So on the previous slide, I talk about, you know, data scientist being the best baker in town, but there's actually a difference between, you know, baker, being a baker, even if it's your passion becoming a the best baker in town. And there's that difference between starting a bakery. It's a different skill set. And for me, I came from a software engineer background or development background. And I, whenever I see new technology, I focus on how do you incorporate to existing systems or to, so I see as software engineers, we're expert 
we're expert at starting a bakery. We know where we put, need to put the cash register. We know how to orchestrate systems, how to uh, make sure that that model or you know, that bread is shippable. Right? <laughs> how, do you, how do you be able to scale it up? Right, and be able to share that knowledge or share that that yummy goodness. <laughs> That's my analogy on it. So, like on this side, on the deploy side, you know, you can look at it. You can deploy it into, you know, in this case in Azure, but you can deploy it into other cloud services. And what I'm trying to show here, you can do it on a Linux device, a Windows device or you can run it on an IoT edge devices or a uh, phone or uh, iOS and Android devices, different ways how you can deploy them. And every time you, you would decide where to deploy uh, a machine learning model, you have to think about, you know, are you gonna deploy it in the cloud or in the edge, right? The same way as, uh, you know, different restaurants, they have to decide where do they cook their bread, right? McDonald's, they source their bread in a factory somewhere, right? A food factory. But uh, you think about Subway, uh, they break, you know, they, they bake their bread closer to the restaurant. You know, so I would consider one restaurant as your edge, right? So you would, because, uh, it's closer to the user. So that, those are the things you have to think about every time you do deployment. Um, model management, the, the good thing about, uh, you know, on the machine learning side or on the cloud side is you can deploy it as a web service and just call that and be able to capture telemetry. So that's on the cloud side. There's a lot of examples out there how you would use it. Uh, but for, you know, like in this case, on this right side where we are deploying, right? You can deploy it up to the cloud and manage it that way you know, with, a, uh, with our cloud infrastructure. Any questions so far? Guys, feel free to uh, send questions if you have through the uh, chat window. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Uh, so what is the edge? Uh, I define the edge as whichever is closest to the user, right? So typically we have all our data centers, they're all hosted up in the cloud, you know, it's other person's computer, right? And and of course, in between that, between the edge and the cloud, you know, I don't know if you've heard about fog, which are nodes, you know, treat it as, you know, your 5G network where they have computing closer, not necessarily in a data sim somewhere, but your data center is moving to your street lamps, right? Your data center is moving somewhere closer to where the user is, but not, uh, you know, compared to devices, right? Devices would be like your phone, right? Or your laptop, your PC, or an IoT dev uh, device, or some, uh, your lamps and those kind of, or your watch, those are considered uh, edge devices. So, so why would you want uh, you know your AI on the on the edge, right? Why, what, what makes sense? Uh, if you want something that has low latency, that means you want it real quick. If you're talking about images and you're sending those images to the cloud every time, that you know, takes longer to upload those images, do inferencing, and then download the results. So you want to move the processing closer to the user. Another one is th scalability. Uh, and like on my previous slide, uh, data centers, there's thousands of devices in terms of deployment. But for, uh, if we're talking about edge devices, you know, there's billions and millions of devices out there. Think about how many uh, devices that you have in, in your house and all these different um, IoT devices. In terms of scalability, it costs less to run machine learning models at the edge rather than, than the cloud. And also flexibility. There are some things that you don't wanna ship outside of your company or if your boss doesn't, or sometimes regulations, right? Out, uh, outside the certain countries, you won't be able to send any data out 
So it makes sense to run it locally. You know, in terms of one good example is if, if I'm flying or riding an airplane and I lost internet connectivity, my system still runs because it's flexible enough to handle that without internet connection during the flight. So on, Onyx, you can also use it as intermediate format, meaning you can convert you know, a PyTorch model in this case into a TensorFlow model you know, using uh, Onyx. And then now you can use it for Android, right? Or same way as you would convert your existing uh, PyTorch map model or TensorFlow model, convert it to be able to use in Core ML. And, and so there's conversions. You can also use it for fine tuning. So especially for, uh, for Onyx model for computer vision, where, uh, where you'll be able to have existing models, uh, Onyx model, and then be able to do a transfer learning based from that. There is also uh, uh, an Onyx runtime that is available out there that you can use to run your Onyx models. It also supports Onyx ML, which is uh, Onyx ML spec is for traditional machine learning models, not necessarily neural networks. And uh, it has extensible architecture plugin for different hardware accelerators. So if you're using uh, NVIDIA uh, Jetson devices, there's an accelerator there. Uh, there's a uh, also for Intel OpenVINO, there's an ex hardware accelerator there too, and a API support. So Onyx runtime, it is on uh, GitHub. If you go to, and uh, see the cool thing about Onyx runtime, I believe is that you can use different operating system. Uh, so if you go to their website, you can pick and choose and it will give you the installation instructions when you would use it. I will demo how you would use this today. So in this case, if you're using Linux and then C sharp, and you know, if you want default CPU or CUDA, you'll be able to do that. It will give you the uh, NuGet packages on this case. So you see the different hardware accelerators that are out there and it's growing every day. So de depending on the chip or depending on what you're, you're doing with, uh, with the internet of things device or different hardwares that you want to deploy these, uh, it allows you to. In Windows, there's also a Windows AI platform that runs on top of Onyx runtime. So the idea there, there is I don't have to select if I use Windows ML API, I don't have to select if it's CPU, GPU, VPU, or XPU, right? It automatically detects. And so uh, if your device, you know, you program once, and if your device has a GPU, use the GPU, if it has, uh, and then it falls back to CPU if it does not have one. And it's using uh, also direct ML. You know, there's a direct ML API. If you're, you know, if you're creating a uh, video games, you can, and you're targeting it on Windows, you can go directly to direct ML API that sits on top of DirectX to run your machine learning models that way. But all that is compatible with the Onyx runtime. One capability you can do also, and if you don't want to install any Onyx stuff in your machine, there's a Docker image for a Jupyter Notebook environment. If you want, just want to try out the Onyx converters, you know, you can just uh, get the Onyx ecosystem uh, Docker image and then be able to uh, create and generate Onyx models and do your inferencing that way. Uh, there's this Onyx base that you can use as a minimal dependency that you can uh, use as your uh, starting uh, image contain or starting image and and expand from there. So I'm going to go through the demo uh, before I do that. Are there any questions so far? Cool. All right. So what I have here is I, I have a Jupyter notebook 
And this one right here, this Jupyter notebook, I'm not writing it in Python, I am writing it in C sharp. So I just want to show you that capabilities of, you know, if my team knows ML.NET, which is the machine learning, and I want to use it in that same model in Python, I would be able to. So in this case, I did run uh, the, this model a few minutes ago. And you know, this is how you would install these NuGet packages for the ML.NET. Uh, there is a Microsoft.ml.onyx transformer and Onyx converter that you can use to export uh, the machine learning models that you train in ML.NET to Onyx. So this one right here, you know, you know, like I said, I'm using ML.NET to be able to display and to be able to uh, format my screen, uh, the output to this. So I have the, on this example, I have this CSV file. And so the simplest example I can find, and it may not be the best uh, use case for machine learning. I have one column for input, one column for output. You put your years experience, it will give you an output. So I got, so I specify I load the CSV file and that's my data sample set, data set that I have. And it tells me right here, minimum and maximum um, that I can describe it. And this one is part of the code. And if you want to, uh, to be able to um, make, uh, to try this out, this Python notebook, I actually have available on GitHub if you go to that link and there's a button there that you can, you can try it on without installing anything on your machine. Uh, there's, uh, that you can run this Python notebook. And uh, this one, what this one does is it actually uh, splits your data between training and test, just randomize it. And then how I would use ML.NET, of course you would use using Microsoft.ML. And it, it all is in part of ML context. So once you have the ML context, you specify here the, the transform as one of my feature is you know, to do my training, to create that pipeline. And once I have that pipeline, I would create the transformer. And once I have the transformer, it gives me a, right here, a um, met metrics to be able to, you know, to, identify or to kind of understand what this model does or you know, the results of my training. And once I have the results of my training, I can, you know, the important part here is I can say convert context that model that convert to Onyx. So once I convert that, I specify um, where the file is, right? This one right here, which is a model name, which is model.onyx. And once I save that, and I open it on Netron, you know, it will save this file right here, model.onyx. It would look something like this. So what I'm trying to showcase here is that Onyx is not just limited to neural networks, you know, computer vision. It's also for traditional machine learning model, models that you can deploy and integrate with your, and integrate. Uh, so this, this is what uh, it would look like in in new, neutron netron right netron and it gives the de developers what the input and the output of that existing model once they incorporate to their uh, to their apps so i have another python notebook here and what this one does is it's using the onyx runtime so and this one is written in python now So you just do pip install Onyx runtime and it would, you can get that model Onyx loaded to this inference session. So once you have a session, you 
like in this case, it will give me the, uh, the inputs. So I'm reading the contents of that Onyx model to give me the, you know, like the input, like in this case, input zero gives me the year's experience, which is if you open in Netron, you'll be able to see here that that year's experience, right? That's part of your input. And then there's another one called salary. So that was the, another input, the year's experience in salary, which is the next one. And then going back through here, yeah, you have your input, years experience and salary in order to get the output. What we're really interested here is this score that output, because that is the result of our inference, right? So all these are just you know one-to-one -one mapping, but the result after it runs through the linear regress regressor, it goes through here. So that would be my output. In this case, you know, you can. You know, since it's an array, you can go through each one and you can see uh, you know, one, two, three, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. I think that's, that's, that's the four, fifth one on our list. And in order to, uh, so in this case, my input data is two and a half and I have to put them in an, a tensor array. Uh, I have to put them in the array of array, right? In order to, to be able to feed them into this uh, session that run, because it requires uh, the input years experience, which is, it, it requires this tensor float with this shape. So that's what I'm trying to do here to get to that correct shape. And so I can feed it. This is my input. And then this is my output the output name and where it, where it goes. So once I do that, it will give me a result. And then I can, I can pick it up from there. Cool. So if you think about what happened, right? I, I have a data scientist. He's really good at ML.net. He knows ML.net. I export it to an Onyx model and I can integrate it to my Python program. But wait, there's more. There's one thing I want to show you guys. Onyx, you can also use it for Node. So the Onyx runtime, you can also use it under uh, a Node application. So in this case, uh, it was ML.NET, we exported to Onyx, and now we're gonna incorporate to a simple node application. So you can just include Onyx runtime on this, on my package JSON and on app.js. It's pretty much the same pattern as what we did in Python, where we create and load that Onyx model to a session. And at the end of the day, it's a matter of, uh, plugging in the right input and converting it to a tensor. So it already has existing this uh, way and how you would create uh, in, Onyx, in Onyx runtime, how you would create a tensor. And so like in this case, the shape of my tensor, it requires me to have a one by one. Uh, and with, with this, I specify the, the value. And like in this case, I let's do 2.2. Let's try this 2.2. And one thing that I've, you know, since this, these, you know, as a developer, when you're looking at this, it says, I don't know why I'm required to incorporate salary, but it is required for some reason when I convert to Onyx model. So I place it in there. So that's, that's kind of like a stub that I don't use, but it was required in order to run it. And so I plug in those two data as part of my input. And then I do a session that run feeding that uh, input and it'll give me the result. 
And of course, like we said in here, we're more interested in the score dot output. And it tells me that it's, a, it's actually one by one. I don't know why, for some reason, the latest model uh, that gets exported, it plugs in negative one by one, which is weird. But, and then it would, then I can get that data and, and get that predicted salary. So in this case, I'm gonna run this node that just to show you that the, the program runs as it goes through here and it prints that predicted salary based from the input 2.2. Cool, isn't that cool? So we created the ML.NET model, we exported to Onyx, it was written in .NET, we, imp we, we loaded the Onyx model into a Python program, use it without installing ML.NET or not knowing about ML.NET, we were able to incorporate it to our, uh, to our uh, Python program. And also we were able to incorporate uh, this Onyx model into our node application. And that right there, that right there opens up a lot of opportunities on how to leverage machine learning into our application. So let, let me go back to the presentation as we continue along. So there's also reference implementation out there. I don't know about you guys. I, I think I'm really excited about this. I mean, when I first, you know, learned about Onyx, I'm like, you know, what is this technology? I mean, it's, it's not a framework. It's not something, but it opens up a lot of that opportunity for us to be able to like, in this case, Right, run it in in edge devices, you know, like in Jetson Nano, or be able to use it for OpenVINO, and be able to export uh, that capabilities. So there's reference implementations out there if you are interested in incorporating that to your edge devices. And there's also a way you can run Onyx into your into a JavaScript, I'm not talking about Node, right? I'm talking about the JavaScript library in the browser. So run Onyx, there's a project called Onyx JS that runs Onyx models or loads Onyx model into the browser. And it's using WebAssembly and WebGL technology, uh, technologies. And it could, it could uh, it's optimized to run for both CPUs or GPUs. So if you want to be able to load that Onyx model in the front end, your Angular app or Vue or TypeScript, it, it is now possible. It allows us to be able to do that with this Onyx.js. And compatibility wise, you know, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Electron app, uh, you, can, you can do it uh, in, in, in iOS and Android devices you see the capabilities right there it opens up a lot of the to our mobile platforms too but wait there is there's more there's more to onyx you can actually use onyx as an intermediate you know to where there's this embedded learning library that is uh, also open source on github that you can train your model as long as you can export it to an Onyx format and be able to, there's a, a converter to this Onyx file to ELL format that converts it to where it would run on a, an MCU without you know, going through that traditional uh, you know, Linux device or Windows device, or, you know, but there's a way you can, you, you'll be able to, to do that. So just to summarize, when do we use Onyx? When, when's the best time to use it? When you want high latency or high inference latency for production use, you know, if you have to, uh, if you want really, really fast uh, machine learning models running for production, I would recommend looking into Onyx. Train it in Python. 
how do you, you know if it's if it's something that is trained in python and then be able to deploy to a c sharp app like what we did demo today to a, a javascript application to a java application or to mobile devices that is one way or when you would use an onyx uh, model if it's a resource constraint device or if it's an iot or an edge devices i would look into uh, how you would convert your model into onyx you, there's a way you can even optimize an onyx model uh, to be able to run on a constraint devices uh, if you train it somewhere let's say you train it on a linux device and you have or, or a windows device and then you have to have a different OS or different hardware. Uh, you have a GPU uh, or, you know, you have a FPGA. If you want to run it, I would recommend looking into Onyx or you would convert your model. Uh, if it's also, um, you have two different models that you're trying to com not necessarily combine them, but use them, you know, one after the other or you know, streamline them, I would, look into onyx and how you would combine let's say you know this data science team they use it in pytorch or they train their model in pytorch and then you have another data science team they turn they they train it using um you know tensorflow and whatever those export it when once you export it in an onyx model then you can you know you have one pipeline and pipe uh, flow uh as as it goes from one model does it to the other. And there's also uh, some, well, just something new, which is on preview right now, is through uh, when, when transformer models, there's a way you can train where, where the training happens in, in the Onyx model itself. Uh, there's a lots of tutorials out there. I haven't really tried it myself, but I think it's, it's a, uh, it's still in preview, it's still early bits. After all this, this is how I felt, right? There's, it's like it opens up a lot of that possibilities of how we can deploy and how we can use, you know, and be able to share those existing models and in interoperability. I think that's, you know, this, this the way I see it is it's how we can democratize AI to be able to use it uh, everywhere in a lot of places. So what is Onyx? It's an open standard that you can use with the right tools of what you're currently using right now and would run efficiently on your target uh, program or platform. How you would create it? There's different ways uh, that you can convert uh, existing models or create uh, from different frameworks. How you would deploy it, I would recommend using Onyx runtime. Uh, you can also use Windows ML. There's onyx.js that you can use uh, in order to uh, deploy it to your devices or to your machine, to different machines. I would, you know, if you're a Python developer, there's Onyx runtime. I would recommend to, to try it out. And if you're interested in, in um, getting the slides, or the presentation material, uh, there's the link down there and be able to, to connect. And if you're interested in learning more about me, I'm a lead software engineer at Spacey. I'm a Microsoft MVP. Uh, the, best, uh, the best way to connect to me is through Twitter or LinkedIn. You connect me via LinkedIn and I appreciate you taking time geeking out with me about Onyx. Thank you very much.